Let's start off today and take a look at a problem that we're going to be trying to solve. So I've created a, a purchase uh, receiving menu here. And the purchase order we're going to start off with is 5243. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into the box here. And then, so the item I'm going to enter in is an A0010. I've, I've created that item and it's, it's a batched item, right? So the next thing that the receiving program is going to ask me to do is put in a quantity. So I'm going to receive 30 of those. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now it's going to ask me for a batch number because this is a, the batch ID. So let's go ahead and put in B25 for batch 25 and we'll hit enter there. And then it's going to ask me for an expiration date. Um, let's go ahead and put in, um, let's put in 04, 25, 2022 and hit enter there. And then we're going to go ahead and hit confirm there and put it away. All right. So when you're receiving a batch item, th those are all the steps you have to do. So let's go ahead and compare that to a GS1 barcode here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to put in a purchase order number, uh, another purchase order. So we're going to, I'm going to copy and paste that in here. And so it's, again, it's going to ask me for the item. So I'm going to put in what's called a GS1 barcode in there and hit enter. And notice that my value is filled in for 30. I don't have to do anything here. I can just confirm it. Notice my batch is B20. I don't have to do anything there and it's going to take me in and finish it off. Hey, I'm Scott Gaines and this is the Dynamics Post and each week I try and create a new video of some new Dynamics 365 functionality. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at that GS1 barcode setup. It's very useful and makes the receiver very efficient when using these barcodes because you can program different values that, that are located inside the uh, barcode and, and translate that into actual values in the system. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot, whole lot today about what a GS1 barcode is and the format. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you kind of understand what it is. So we're not going to go a whole lot into that, but, but let's go ahead and take a look at the setup. So we'll go ahead and go into Dynamics. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go underneath Warehouse Management, and then I'm going to go underneath the Warehouse Management Parameters. And then in the general tab, there's a barcode section here. And then we've got a field here called G GS1. And it's I'm identifying my GS1 barcodes by a right bracket C1 there. And then the other thing that I'm specifying here is a group separator, which I'm just entering in a tilde. Now, we'll mention to turn this on, there is a, a feature in feature management that you need to turn on for GS1. So make sure you turn that on as well. Depending on when you watch this, it may already be on or off, but uh, currently it, it does need to be turned on. So then the next thing we're going to take a look at is we're still under warehouse management, under setup, and then under the GS1 section, there's the GS1 application identifiers. All right, so these are the different codes that the, might be in the GS1 barcode. So, you know, ones that we're going to use today are this 01, this GTIN number. We're going to use the 10, which is the batch and the expiration date and the quantity are the ones that we're going to use. Now, I created this just by cl clicking on the create default setup. It gives you this default setup. You can certainly do new and, and create your own custom ones. But uh, for our example today, we're going to be able to use the default here. Okay. Now, the next thing you, we want to take a look at is this generic setup. We're going to go in here. And again, to create this, I've just clicked on create default setup. And what this is doing is this is matching up the mobile ID field to that application ID that we created in the last step. So, for example, the expiration date, we're mapping that over to 17. Um, we might have quantity there that's, that's mapped to 30. So this is just a default setup that we can use. Now, the last bit of setup that we're going to do is we're going to go into the GS1 policy. And the policy that we're going to be using today is this purchase receiving. This is just telling it uh, which, which IDs it's going to be able to use inside the, the mobile scanning device, right? So it's going to be looking for expiration date, batch ID, and quantity. Now, the next piece is a little setup. I said that was the last piece, but there is one more little piece we need to do is over on the mobile device menu item. If I go and click in there, and scroll down, we, it was a purchasing menu that I set up and this one here with GS1. And I did enter in a GS1 policy, which is that purchase receiving policy. Now, just because I have a GS1 policy here doesn't mean that I have to only scan GS1 barcodes. As you have noticed in the first example that I gave at the very beginning of the video, I just entered in the item number. And it, same thing, if I scan the batch number, it would work just fine. It's just looking for that that F1, C1, FNC1 number, they're the right bracket uh, C1 
to determine that if it's a GS1 barcode or not, okay? So let's take a quick look at the item that I had set up. So if we go into uh, product information management and then let's go to release products, the item that I was using was that A00010 and this is just set up as a batch item. And then I did set up a barcode in here. So it's a barcode and this is the barcode that I set up for that one. And then let's take a look at the, the actual barcode that I'm, that I'm entering in here. So this is the barcode that I'm scanning. So here's the right bracket C1 that identifies it as a GS1 barcode. We have the O1 that's gonna identify it as that GTIN number, which is the UPC code here. The, this is the UPC code that I have right here. Then 30 was the quantity, so that's identifying the quantity. So my quantity is actually 30. Probably should have made it something different to make it a little more unique, but that's the way I have it. And then the 10 identifies the batch, so that's batch 20, the B20. Let's go ahead and make this um, make this something else. Uh, B, let's do B30 on this one, just so we know it's different. And then the 17 is the expiration date. So this is in uh, this is saying in 2022. April 15th, so we can go ahead and make that May 15th if we want to. So 5-15-22 should be the expiration date on that, all right? So that's the UPC code I'm gonna copy into the, into the device there, all right? So let's go over to the device and we'll receive another one. So I've got another PO set up. Let me cancel out of this one. Uh, we'll go in the PO that we'll use this time is this 5245. And uh, we're gonna scan our item. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in that, that uh, GS1 barcode, put that in there and hit enter. So again, it's gonna fill in our values, our 30. There's our item, go ahead and hit okay here. And there's our, there's our batch number. And then we can say okay, and that's done. So if we go and take a look at our, our receiving there. So if we go to back into, if we go to procurement and sourcing, and let's go ahead and find that purchase order, go to all purchase orders. And the purchase order number is 5245. We'll filter down to that one. And if we look at the registration lines on that, let's go ahead and go open it up. And then we go to update line and we take a look at the registration. We'll notice that we have that batch number B30. If we click in the batch here and we open up the batch, we'll see that it's got that expiration date of 51522. Okay, so the GS1 barcode allows you to put in multiple values based on based on the barcode format. It seems to be really flexible where you can put in a different, you know, you can scan cases or, or whatever you want to scan. You, as long as you have the, uh, the format set up correctly, it should work. If you're familiar with the purchase receiving, I'll link a video here that goes through the basics of the purchase receiving. I kind of skipped over that in this video, so hopefully that'll help you out. Until the next one, see you later. Bye.